voice in your ears, Perfect Purvis, and this is American Football in Finland. Today, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Q Floyd and Jabari Harris. So what's going on, world? How y'all doing? The AFF Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and wherever you listen to your podcast. Seriously, American Football in Finland is currently available on 25 different platforms. Wherever you listen, be sure to rate us. Anything less than five stars will tell us that you're a hater. This is going to be season five for AFF, but a lot has changed since the last Maple Bowl episode. So before we get into that, tell us a little bit about you guys' off season. Well, for me, uh, I haven't been doing much, man. Pretty much just working, um, you know, keeping up with what's going on in Europe and uh, definitely the signings of the new imports and, you know, just, just relaxing, man. It's been a good spring, I guess you say, winter, spring. It's been good. Yeah, I'd say about the same thing, just preparing for another season uh, up north with the Rover Nimi Norman and just enjoying the the off season, uh the off season action. A lot of new faces coming into the league this year into the country. So very excited to see what these guys bring to the table and how they enjoy playing American football in Finland. For my off season stuff, I haven't really done doing much. Just hanging out with my daughter and still doing that all off season while I'm in hibernation. If you haven't noticed already, AFF has made some drastic changes in 2020. Most notably, we now have our own website where you can find the latest episodes and join our message board community to talk football anytime. So head over to AmericanFootballInFinland.com and check us out. Also, we're now on Instagram using the handle at AmericanFootballInFinland. There we've spent the last month of February updating our list of top players in Finland, so be sure to follow us and tag AFF in any post you want us to share. Recently, we've also partnered with Wrecker Athletics, who provides quality football uniforms and apparel to football teams throughout Europe. To find out more about this great company, head over to WreckerAthletics.com and join their mailing list for updates. That's R-E-K-K-R Athletics.com. So that's all the big changes we can discuss at the moment. We have a few more updates that we'll probably announce in the upcoming weeks. So be sure to follow us on Instagram and visit our website to stay up to date. Let's get into this week's show and discuss Finland's top 25 players. Let's talk about the top 25 list this year. Uh, We made a list. It was very difficult to make. We had to choose from over 250 players. We still came up with a list that we're proud of for the top 25 but we know that we missed some guys or there's some guys that could have been on the list that we probably decided not to put on because of different reasons. So let's throw out some of those names and explain why they would have been good a good fit on the list. Q, who are Q, a couple guys? Um, I picked two guys. One, Tony Len- Lenholm from uh, the Helsinki Wolverines. Um, just a hard-nosed, uh, kind of undersized D lineman. Um, has a motor. Made a lot of, you know, ruckus in the backfield uh, against certain teams. Uh, he did, His numbers didn't show it, but you can always felt. You, I guess pretty much they always felt his presence. Um, I always liked the way he played over the years, and uh, he just gives all he got. And uh, I, I do think with a few more, you know, made plays, uh, he possibly could have been in that top 25. And uh, second, I'm going with Seppo, um, the OG. I mean, he got back in shape, somewhat shaping. Wanted to go out there and help his team. So, for me, he got denied just simply because of the heart and how much it takes, you know, after you play football and stop for a while just to try to even get remotely back in some shape and be able to play. Um, I think that's a huge motivation for his team and um, just just for him as a person. So, um, those were the two that I, I chose. What about you, Barry? Is there anybody you think should have made the list as well? Uh, yes, I have uh, two guys from the same team. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Kari Kutala and young Arthur Kentonen. I I really liked how Arthur started the season. Uh, He was a guy that ended up starting the beginning of the season, and he was asked to, you know, cover some talented imports, some talented talented finish players, and I think he did a pretty good job playing the corner and the safety position. Unfortunately, you know, he had a lot of great, talented Americans to compete with, so he didn't get a lot of burn and playing time later in the year as the Wolverines made the playoff stretch. But I think for what it's worth, I think that guy came in almost every game and got an interception, had about three or four interceptions on the season, made some pretty good tackles. And I definitely think he has like a bright future ahead of him. Just didn't have enough film and enough enough 
stats under his belt to make the list. But I think he's a guy that in the future, if he gets an opportunity, he'll be great. Uh, Kari Kutula, another guy that didn't play a lot. Um, I think he played about three games with the Wolverines, and then he had, like, other things to do in his personal life, so he was only able to play a few games. But you could definitely notice the difference in the Wolverines' offensive line, especially in the run game when he was present uh, on Rojo's left side. And uh, he's always been known to be a big, aggressive, very experienced veteran lineman. So I think that if he would have had a few more games under his belt this season, he could have been as good as some of the other linemen that made the list this year. I'm glad you put R2 on that list, man, because that young guy really did ball out. It's interesting, too, because he's a safety, but he played corner for you guys last year. He got a lot of time playing in a cornerback position and did really well which is usually that's surprising when a safety goes to corner. Usually it's the other way around. So definitely good to put a a young guy on this list that in the next couple of years, he'll definitely be on the top 25, kind of like the DB from Quopio, Erie Pekkanen, Pekkanen. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your last name, man, but I know who you are, (laughs) okay? But one guy that I thought could have been on this list and probably was right on the cusp, probably would have been like number 26 or 27, is Lori Hanula from the Vasa Royals. The Wasa Royals, sorry, I said Vasa. They're the Wasa Royals, guys. But Lori is a huge guy, first of all. He looks like a football player. One of the few, like, Viking-looking type of guys out here in Finland. And he plays just like that. He's a big guy. He can command a double team at most times when he's on the field. And he still can get after the quarterback, but also helping the run game. He's a, a full, fully rounded defensive lineman. I think he can play a little bit of defensive tackle if he had to. Um, the reason I think he didn't make the top 25 this year was just because of how bad the Royals defense was. It was really inconsistent, which means there was times where he wasn't as big of a factor as he would have been if, you know, some of his teammates could have, you know, made a tackle or held their gaps or did something. So that I think his team situation brought held him back a little bit, and that's what put him on the cusp instead of in the top twenty five. If we were to have his list a year before, or even maybe even this year, he'd definitely be in the top twenty five easily because the Royals usually have a decent defensive unit. He just two thousand nineteen just wasn't the year for them, and he kind of went by the wayside with that. Had less opportunities to make plays as well. He's a great player. Just didn't couldn't get the production that we normally expect from him because of the situation. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with you on that. And I mean, them playing in that that odd front defense didn't help anymore because you know he was taking more double teams, and you know the guys around him wasn't really able to fill in when he was you know taking up those two lanes like you'd want a good interior D lineman to do so. I think he definitely has motivation for the 2020 season, and I think that in a better si- in a better system, in a better situation, he's going to be back at the top of his game. If you're listening and you think there are more players that we missed, feel free to let us know on the AFF community forum at AmericanFootballInFinland.com. Yes, we have a message board. You can just hop on there and, you know, tell your thoughts. I mean, reasonable thoughts. Look good, play good. It's as simple as that. And Wrecker Athletics will help you look good in their fully customizable team uniforms. Made by players for players. Wrecker Athletics produces high quality uniforms for teams throughout Europe. Wrecker Athletics also allows teams to design custom apparel for comfortable travel and workout purposes. Visit WreckerAthletics.com today to take your team to the next level. The list is out on Instagram now on the website, AmericanFootballInFinland.com. So we won't rename it here, but we'll talk about the different players and we'll dissect and tell you why we chose them to be on the list. Starting with the 25 to 21, uh, Bari, could you tell us some of the players in this tier that we for sure were right to put in the spots? Uh, I mean, I'm going to talk about two guys specifically. Uh, number 25, Yuhani Kovamaki. Uh, he's been a guy that's uh, he's been a big name player around Finland for years. And this year he definitely did every, everything possibly he could to make his team better. I mean, he was asked to, you know, move around from the nickel spot to the safety spot. And I think that he did a lot of great things for that defense, which overall didn't do as well as we would have expected or wanted. But I think that he was a key piece to that defense again. 
and he definitely deserved to be at the top in the top 25. Uh, another guy that I want to talk about is running back from the Tampa Bay Saints, Tuka Lettinen. Uh He's a guy, man. He's he's a guy that when you look at him, he's tall, he's lean. He almost looks like a wide receiver playing running back, but he runs extremely hard. And I think, unfortunately, he just wasn't a part of a team that was successful this year. But when his number was called and he was asked to produce, he did it. And he runs the ball hard, and he's not afraid to take a hit. hit. So I think that those two guys definitely deserve to be in the top 25. <laughs> yeah, I think Tampa Bay played three quarterbacks this year. And he was at, Yeah, and he was almost the, the Wildcat quarterback the whole game. So he's definitely a versatile player, and he deserves to be on this list. Okay, so those those are some guys that definitely deserve where they are. But obviously the case can be made that some of these guys should be higher or even taken off the list. So Q, you get to play devil's advocate on this tier. Tell us who should have been moved and why. Um, I'm, I'm going to say if anybody should be moved uh, that could probably go higher, it might be Nico Quick. Um, I think he was the best tackler for the Roosters. I think he was – uh, one of the, you know, he saves a lot of, a lot of touchdowns, um, a leader on the defense. Um, it just so happens he gets hit a lot because of their defensive line. So he doesn't really have to cover much. Um, he doesn't have to make many plays in the secondary, but as far as touchdown saving tackles, I know he made a lot of those, um, this year. So I think if he could have probably went higher just off the simple fact of uh, overall player, um, we just didn't get to see a whole bunch of it um, this year um, due to the competition and then just due to maybe he just wasn't, you know, in position or whatever. But I think overall he was a better player, so he could have possibly been moved. Um, other than that, I don't really see anybody in that 25 to 21 that could have could have moved up. Um, Yuhani, obviously I like him too. He's, he's always going hard for his team, um, but he definitely could have made a lot more plays for that defense this year. Um, but other than that, I think everything else was was, was set. That yeah, sounds good to me. I, I agree with you on, on Nico too. Like he, the year before, he probably would have been like top ten easily. But this year, I I think the Roosters, the, the situations that they had, like you said, just made it that he wasn't as much of a factor. You know, that's one of the, the biggest things that we consider with a lot of these players is like how like impactful they were. And for him, he just we like you said, we didn't get seal out of him. That's all it was. I like these guys here in this uh, twenty-one through twenty-five range. Uh, one guy that I will point out that I think has an upside in the future is uh, the defensive back from Corpio, Idro Park Peckerny. Idro Peckerny. Uh, I really like this kid, man. I had the opportunity to see him live in the games, and he he was definitely he's definitely a dog and i think the future of the secondary for this corpio defense i mean he's very young has great skills has great ball skills and he's not afraid for his age i think he's about what 18 19 years old and he's out there in the maple league covering imports and covering national team players i think that he's a guy off of his skill set and intangibles alone that I think if we make this list a year from now, after he develops and gets more experience, he'll definitely jump from that 24 spot and possibly to the top 10. Yeah, I agree with you there for sure. Well, if you're listening and you have a take on this portion on the list, this bottom tier, feel free to let us know on the AFF Community Forum at AmericanFootballInFinland.com. And yes, I will be doing these plugs all throughout the show. Are you planning a trip and looking for an affordable place to stay? It's 2020, so we know overpriced hotels are a thing of the past. Find yourself a more affordable and convenient option using Airbnb. If you haven't joined Airbnb yet, it's not too late to find your ideal travel experience. Use the Airbnb link in the AFF description to get a huge discount of up to 41 euros for signing up today. That's almost one free night for most places. Hurry up and join today. Okay, so moving on to players 20 through 11. Q, this time you tell us which players we got right in this uh, tier of players. Um, I think we got we got Olin in the right spot. Um, he's he was in a he was put in a in a I think a not a bad position, but he was put in a position where he had to cover a little more faster receivers, 
a little more athletic receivers. And, and um, he's a, I won't say older guy, but he's been in the Maple League for years. Maybe he doesn't have the speed he used to, um, but he still had a presence at Nickelback a lot. And uh, I think maybe that was the reason why he didn't go higher is because of the, the position he was in. He didn't get to make a lot of plays in that position. Um, other than that, I think Aku from the Wolverines, um, he showed a lot of flashes of, of, of being able to make plays. Um, I think sometimes when you play with that many Americans, it, it maybe affects your psyche a little bit of, of maybe I don't have to do as much. And I'm not saying that he, he doesn't want to make plays, but sometimes you're just hesitant a little bit or you, you think that other people are going to do things. Um, just what I think. And uh, Tino, Tino is on the brink for me. Um, Tino should obviously be a, a top 10 player in Finland. Some, some people might argue that he is. Um, but for me, I have, I guess I just have higher expectations for him. Um, given his, his, his skill level, his talent. Um, I just want to see more from him. And for me, he went in that spot because he's obviously not a bottom 20, 20, you know, 21, 25 player, but he's also not in that top 15 either. And, um, I just think he needs to just to make a few more plays um, on this upcoming season, just to put himself in the, in, in the top tier of these of these players that's in Finland right now. I think we were dead on on all those guys. There's a slight drawbacks that kept them from being, you know, like top ten, top fifteen type guys, but definitely worthy of being in the top twenty. Obviously, there's some guys in this this area, especially because it's what twenty to eleven. There's some guys that could be higher, lower. Who are some of those guys, Barry? I'm going to start with uh, number 16, Alexander Waslev, if I said it right. Sorry, I'm not finished speaking, but I do my best like we all do. I like to call him Wassel Jeff. I know it's wrong, but I like to call him Wassel Jeff. <laughs> just say, just say Alka. Alka. I think he's a guy that he's definitely one of the top receivers in Finland. I think he could have been a bit higher. But I think what didn't allow him to be higher is the fact that he had two other receivers on his team that combined for almost 40 receiving TDs. I mean, it's hard to basically stand out when you have that much talent around you. I mean, obviously, Namdi and Adam Connett was just having career seasons for Miro. And I mean, people kind of forgot that Alexander was statistically out of all the finished receivers probably one of the most productive but I think that that's what kind of held him back just a little bit is that he he didn't have to be the number one receiver for that team so he wasn't asked to be the number one receiver for that team and I think that that's what ended up keeping him from being the top 10 player but he's definitely a guy that can possibly go higher in the future with a different situation uh DV DB Vilho now I got it right Vilho Lempinen uh, another young DB that was very, very, very talented. I mean, this was a guy that I saw firsthand cover Americans. I mean, go one-on-one with guys and really not give up anything. He's another guy that was just surrounded by so much talent. I mean, you talk about guys on the list, uh, Nico Quicker, Axley Olin, uh, Ville, Roto. Like, he was on the same defense with guys that were already on the top 25 list. So, He's another guy that I think that if he was in a situation where he was asked to do more, his production probably could have went up and he could have also been higher on the list. One final guy that I want to talk about is Big Tom, Tom Swosty. Still, I think that Tom was, uh, he showed this year before he was injured how much of an impact he made for the Vassar Royals because the other two running backs, they filled in and they did the best that they could do, but they did not oppose as much of a threat in the run game as Tom did. I think that because of his injury, he wasn't allowed, he wasn't allowed to really give us as much as he has in the seasons before when he was healthy. And I think that was the difference from him being a top 10 guy rather than a 15 through 25 guy. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Tom. My boy Tom Suosti, he was the one. Uh, I think he he literally could have been a difference between the Royals making the playoffs last year because when he got hurt in one of those games, uh, the running back that came in for him, Nico Barrow, bless his heart, young kid, tried his best, but there was situations where he fumbled the ball in the red zone and where he dropped a wide-open touchdown pass. And that's two scores, and they lost by, I think, a touchdown in that game. And they were one game away from the playoffs. And there was another game where if they would have had a consistent running game from Tom Swosti, they probably would have beat the, um, 
I think it was the Saints in another game later in the season. But he definitely is the the one guy that I think should have been way higher. But like you said, his production wasn't what we needed from him this year because he got injured. So a guy that I wanted to point out that I think actually deserved to be where he is is a wide receiver from Corpio Johannes. Now, he's a guy that a lot of people like you were saying earlier, when you think about the Corpio Steelers passing game, it automatically stands out, Tino, Tino, Tino. But this year, uh, I think that Johannes was actually the big play receiver that allowed the Steelers to stay in a lot of games and close a lot of games. Uh, looking at the stats, you know, he's probably not going to have uh, uh, more yards or more, re- you know, big plays in that sense. But he was a closer. And anytime Self was in situations where he needed to go somewhere with the ball to have a big play made, third down, red zone, whatever, he was favoring Johannes over Tino a lot this year. And I think that that's why he actually jumped higher because of the actual production and it was consistent. A lot of the guys on the list, they may have a game where they're hot. They may have a game where they're lukewarm. They may have a game where they're flat out cold. But this guy... I can't remember too many games where he didn't make a big play, didn't score a touchdown, or simply didn't help the Corpio Steelers finish. And I think that that's why he deserved to be this year at that number 14 spot and still a young guy that has a lot to prove. Yeah, I think if you're going to talk about, I mean, it's kind of the elephant in the room, is Tino and, and Johannes, the, the biggest difference is like what you said, the big playability. The stats point to Tino. The stats, Tino has all the stats. He has more receptions, more yards. He's got volume. He's getting seven or eight targets a game, while Johannes is getting three or four. But Johannes is killing it with those three or four. Like, like you said, he's making big plays every time he touches the ball. And that's what really set him apart this season was that he had a little bit less opportunities than other people on the same team, but he still produced at a very high level. More bang for your buck, if you want to say. And that's what really set him apart is like what, what I said earlier about we're looking for, you know, impact and playmakers on this list. This isn't about stats. This isn't an all-star list. It's the best players. And he's a better player in that aspect because when you give him the ball, you know it's a big play compared to someone else who might need three or four catches to make one big play. You give him three catches, he gives you at least two big plays. That's production. So that's the 2311. Again, if you're listening and you got any take on this portion of the list, feel free to let us know on the AFF Community Forum at American Football. In 2020 will be a big year for the AFF podcast. It's our first year having our own website to better engage with the football community. As cool as it is having our own site, it wouldn't be possible without a reliable hosting company. We use Bluehost to own AmericanFootballInFinland.com outright. From the domain name to our custom email addresses, Bluehost makes it all possible at an affordable price. If you have a website or want to start one, go to Bluehost today and choose the option that is right for you. To receive the AFF discount, use the URL link in this episode description or click on the Bluehost logo found on our website page. Now, our top 10, we're very proud of it and we're confident in our top 10, so we're not going to poke any holes in the order. We're just going to give some additional love and explain and clarify why we chose these players where we did in the list. So, Q, you can start us off. All right, well... um... I'm going with number 10 and number 9, um, Oxley Vartanen. Uh, Oxley, I got a chance to coach him in 2017. He was uh, obviously still a young kid then. Um, but you see the size, you see the ability to learn the defense and know where he needs to be in the defense. Um, now, two years later, uh, he's pretty much – that's his position, the middle linebacker. Um, he can play outside linebacker, and I think he's obviously one of the best – uh, finish players, best defensive finish players at that too. So I think that's why he gets in that number 10 spot for me. Uh, number nine, Miko Sepinen. Miko Sepinen is obviously not uh, – he's he's not uh, in the lower half of this because he's a playmaker. You've seen – if you go off of his stats, his stats were pretty much the best on the team as far as our receivers, um, his ability to make plays. Um, he's just been having some some bad quarterbacks in the last few years, and 
um, is kind of taking a toll on on his production, but he still gets it. So I think anybody that ever watched him play or can see him play, um, you know he has the ability to score at any time. Um, so I think he's he's rightful in that spot of nine. Um, just because you can you can put him probably on any team in the Maple League, and he'll have that same production. What about uh, players eight and seven? Number eight, Yas Kavarin, and uh, he's a young guy, man, that just really emerged onto the team this year. I mean, for the past two seasons, he's been a guy that that's been making plays at the linebacker position. But I mean, this year he really stepped it up. I mean, he had his nose everywhere on the field. He was a complete dog. wasn't afraid to go. Hits up with the big boys, and I think he was one of the top tacklers, top playmakers for that defense, and also in the league this year. Definitely deserved to be in the top ten, and very excited about the future he's gonna have there in San Diego. Uh, number seven, uh, veteran Oko Altanen. Uh, he's a guy that we've been talking about almost his whole career in Finnish football, and even though people have to say what they have to say about him getting older. Maybe losing a step. I don't think so. I think that this guy still has that motor. He's still a dog. And uh, he was just surrounded by a lot of talent on that defensive line for the Roosters. But he still was a man amongst boys. And I don't think that there's a guy that's shown that they can block him one-on-one at the tackle position yet because he still has the juice. So I think that these two guys rightfully deserve to be in the top 10. And I think that they, they showed with their play and also their leadership ability, abilities off the field as well that they deserve to be top 10 players in the league. Yeah, he definitely still got the juice. I don't care what nobody say. Oko, Loco Oko still got the juice. Don't y'all sleep on that boy. For me, I had the sixth player who was Yeri Lati, offensive lineman. And the reason he's so high is we're high on, you know, battle of the trenches especially in the Maple League where there's not a lot of emphasis on offensive line play. And Yeri came in in the second half of the season for the Roosters, him and a couple other uh, linemen, and really changed the dynamic of that offensive line. They were able to do what they want when they wanted when he was on that line protecting the quarterback and also helping make running lanes for the running back. What I really liked about Yeri watching him play was that he was cool, calm, collected. You know, he's a, a veteran in the Maple League. He's still a young guy to me, but he's a veteran in the Maple League. I think he's won like six championships with the Roosters already. And so he has that experience. And when he came in, you know, he came in, he played aggressive, but he played control. And he was able to do things that they weren't necessarily missing early in the season, but he made things a lot easier for that offensive unit. And that's why he got the sixth spot. And I mean, he could, I still think he could be a little bit higher, but six is definitely the right spot for last season's play. Absolutely. I definitely agree with you. Uh, with these guys here, uh, the, the the bottom half of this top 10 list, man, I mean, I think these guys were really guys that stood out because they were in positions that that made the biggest impact on their teams. I mean, you always talk about winning championships and dominating games. You got to start in the trenches. And I think that these guys, even at the linebacker position, had their nose in the trenches all season long. And they definitely proved why they're there. And uh, they definitely deserve to be where they are on the list. I think once we get to this, like, 10 and up, these are, like, these franchise guys. If you had like if you had to start a team, you could start from with any of these guys. You could say, hey, we'll build a team around this guy. And you're going to be like, yeah, we're good for the next 10 years. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Let me get my Madden team set up, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening and you got any take on our 10 through 6, Feel free to let us know on the AFF Community Forum at American Football in Finland. The American Football in Finland podcast is more than happy to provide a necessary service to the football community on an international scale. If you haven't yet noticed, our podcast is free to listen to, and we've also created an online platform for the football community to engage with each other. Unfortunately, it isn't free, nor cheap to do these things. We ask that if you really appreciate what we're doing, Feel free to make a small donation in support of AFF. Head to the Support AFF section on our website and choose the Donate tab to help us keep this thing going. You can donate through our Podbean patron program or just give what you can with either PayPal or Stripe payments. Anything you donate is real support and we truly appreciate it. Just like 10 through 6, our top 5. Solid. 
So let's just explain and clarify why these players deserve the positions we gave them. Bar, you can start us off this time. Uh, I'm going to jump right on to it at number five, Arthur Thinenberg. Arthur is another guy like Oko who's been a veteran lineman in Finland. Uh, these guys have had experience, you know, Arthur playing in Germany, playing in Austria. He's that type of player where people want to pay for him to come play on their team. And I know him coming back home and playing in Porvu, he definitely made a big difference for guys like Dayton Wynn to be able to run inside, outside, and all around defenses this year because of what he brings to the table. He's not just a physical guy, but he's very smart. He's a guy that I play with this guy. He's a guy that can make a check for the quarterback at the line of scrimmage. Yo, bro, we can't block that. I got it. I'm going to make the check. That's why he's at this number five spot and probably one of the best linemen that has played in Finnish football because He's so smart. He's so athletic for his size. He's about 6'4", and he's moving all of that weight like he's a, a tight end. So I think that Arthur definitely deserves to be in that top five, and he's definitely a guy that I still think has a lot of football left in him. Coming, coming at number four, this is my favorite. I've been waiting to have the opportunity to talk about this guy, and that's going to be Miro Cadmary. I mean, I love my quarterbacks, and I think that this year – Miro just had an unbelievable season that wasn't expected. I mean, coming into the season, nobody had a clue that Miro would be the starting quarterback. And once now the starting quarterback, nobody had a clue that he would be the MVP of the season. But he did. I think when you talk about silence the critics, Miro was the definition of that this year. And I think that he deserves all the credibility and recognition that he's getting. Some people may argue that Miro should have been number one. But I think that he's rightfully at number four for many other reasons. I mean, he played with a great team. He had a lot of success, but I still think that there were other guys on this list above him that were asked to do much more that probably had um, probably a little bit more talent as well. And I think that that's why Miro landed at number four before a guy that wasn't even talked about as a quarterback the season before a guy that's been hated on as a quarterback for the last probably four or five years for him to be in the top five. I think that this is a great spot for him to be in. I don't care what anybody wants to say. Miro's a great quarterback. What I would like to see him do, I would like to see him jump to the number one spot by repeating it again this year. I don't care what nobody say. Miro the hero, goddamn. <laughs> Let, let's. I just want to. Uh, I know we're we're doing the list and we're we're being as positive as we can about the players, but I really want. If you're listening, you really need to hear this. That this is a top twenty-five in the country. Miro's number four. That's damn good, and that's the that's the end of it. Like number four is really high, and he's up there, and he was a great player. He was a great quarterback. He had the intangible. He had that it factor. Reminds me of a, a young Tim Tebow. Yeah, I said it. He had that it factor. He knows how to win. And that's what he did for his team. He distributed the ball well. He got everybody touches. You got what? Um, Adam Connett, Namdi Agude, and Alexander Walsajif. And uh, there's, I can't remember the other receiver's name. He had four receivers that were going off all season for him. And that's because he made sure everyone got the ball. And he also had a great running back. That's what a quarterback is supposed to do. And he did it at the highest level in Finland last season. And he's number four on this list, not because he's not number one. He's a number four because he's number four out of the whole country. That is a great accomplishment. And we are celebrating him, not trying to take away from him we're celebrating how great of a player he was this year absolutely i, just, I had to say it. Sorry. and i think that you know if we made a top 25 for all the players imports and eu guys included miro would still be on that list and i think that that says a lot because he outperformed other american quarterbacks this year let that be said so miro you keep doing your thing you keep striving for greatness and you keep going forward uh, I mean, yeah, he definitely was the best quarterback in the league still, in my opinion. But um, I mean, obviously, I think uh, Artu um, is a top five player. He's he's probably the best lineman on that team, probably one of the best linemen in Finland. Um, so he's rightfully in the top five. Yeah, like you say, you know, we got a lot of buzz from people saying Miro uh, should have been higher. Um, the reason why I think number four is good, um, just like Jabari said, well, 
Nero's season was unexpected. Um, if anybody looked up his stats from last year, uh, the previous season, you wouldn't see any really major quarterback stats. I think him being at number four also saves time for expectations for next year. I mean, because if he if he comes back and repeats uh, the season that he had, I mean, it's, 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 I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think being at number four, coming from where he came from, is is a great thing. Um, obviously, his teammates, his coaches wanted him to be number one. Um, but like I said, if if we if we look at the stats just in that, he did have the most touchdown passes. He did leave lead in um, pass efficiency. But there was some other uh, was another quarterback that's not finished that led pretty much everything else. So not taking away from what Miro did, he did have a great season. But he also plays on a great team. And um, not to take away from his ability, but when you have a team like that, uh, the, the pressure isn't really there a lot of times to, to perform because guys around you are always making plays. But I can't take away from what he did. I mean, 50 touchdowns, he, he had records for the team, and that was just a great season for him. But I think number four is like a, a great spot for the simple fact of like out of 250 players, a guy that didn't play quarterback really um, in the last season or two, um, just to, for him to be up there, I mean, that's a great thing. So, um, other than that, I mean, I think those spot on. Q, tell us about the next guys up. Uh, Edu, a young guy, he's watched Oko um, and Oko's motor over the years, and I know that that played an effect on him. Not to mention um, the D line coach. You know what I mean, Victor. Uh, his his passion, um, the, the way that he pushes all his D linemen, man, you can't. You can't ask for a better coach than that in Finland. So I give I give the praise to uh, to Victor for Edu uh, having that type of work ethic, and uh, just for him seeing players before him. You know the the responsibilities that you have as a D lineman or a defensive end for the Roosters, and and he can play offense. So uh, I think that obviously puts him in the top two. Uh, Marcus Siskinen, um, big play guy. He's been playing what ten years. You know what I mean? And still still doing top tier things. Um, Played with a with a healthy team of Americans, but still made his mark on that team and still made his mark in the league. Uh, one of the best route runners um, that coming from coming from Finland, so he he's definitely a top player. I mean, they can argue uh, the Edu and, and Marcus, but I, I feel like this top five is it could go anywhere. Yeah, I want to I want to talk about the number uh, two guy. I mean, I agree. Um, Edward Vester and then at number three is that's as as perfect as it gets. Because he's easily a top three player, young guy, potential off the roof. He's not even close to being to his like his ceiling, and that's crazy. Because he's already, I think, how old is that dude? Like eighteen, nineteen? Yeah, man, that boy is definitely a D one caliber athlete. Yeah, like once he goes to college, I don't know what's gonna happen. This he might be one of those guys that gets a shot at the league. I don't know. It obviously depends on what college and how he does, but. He has that type of potential. And Marcus Siskinen is, in my opinion, I mean, we already said it. He's the best receiver. He's the best finished receiver in the league. That's what we're saying. And I stand by that 100%. I think um, what people might not understand about Marcus Siskinen is he's accustomed to playing with Americans, yet he still stands out. It's very hard to stand out when you're playing with American receivers, but his game is so well-rounded. Siskinen is the guy that he's he's big. He can play on the outside. He's strong. He can block for screens or for running backs if you need him downfield. He's got a couple pancakes on his highlight film, and they actually look good. Uh, RJ, you need to thank that man. I see you running by as he put somebody on their back. Also, you got, you got a guy who – is fast enough to beat you deep, but runs routes so well that he can go across the middle. He can do the short routes. He can make you miss after he catches the ball. So he has that um, actual um, yak ability, both from being fast and being able to break tackles. And he's also just a big time playmaker. He makes big plays. It's really hard to have that whole package at the receiver spot, especially coming from, a, a meager background. He's not one of the, you know, roosters guys who've been coached up by the best coaches for years, kind of self-made player. And that's another reason why a lot of people might not even know about him or not think of him as highly as we do. But you turn on the film and you see he's a top receiver and he does everything. And that's something I can't say about any of these other receivers. I just can't say that 
there's no holes in their game, that they're they're great at every type of receiver that you need. He's a guy that can play inside, outside, and he can do everything you need from a receiver. That's just really hard to compare with anyone else. And that's why he's so high on this list, and I'm so happy that we all agreed to put him this high on this list because he deserves it more than most. And, I mean, he's another guy, in my opinion, man. He can make some tough catches, but also he could take some tough hits. I mean, this guy played – Every game this season. And, I mean, in this slot position, you bound to catch some balls where you're finna get creamed by a linebacker or safety. He did that and got up and was ready to go back get it. And I think that, you know, even watching him last season in the national team games where, you know, the team was coming from Division One and he was a guy that wasn't, un- that wasn't heard of, he was a guy that even in those games was getting open, scoring touchdowns. And I think that it, him and Miro at the same time, and time start to emerge because, you know, Miro was coming off the bench, Siskin is coming off the bench, and a season later these guys are in the top five conversation. So I definitely think that four, three, two, those guys were definitely guys that deserve to be where they are. And uh, I'm very happy for Miro, Siskin, and then Edward because, I mean, these are, in my opinion, guys that, you know, just came from the bottom and, still got a lot of upside that most of the guys on these lists do not have. All right, let's talk about number one. Everybody is like, eh, we're not mad at you for picking Kari Pyron in for number number one. Like, eh, I'm upset (laughs) about this, 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 but eh, it makes sense. And the thing is, there's no other way to go about it. This kid is a -a once-in-a-generation type of running back. He's a guy where if I don't think I don't think he's gonna play in the Maple League this year, but in four or five years, people are still gonna know who he is and what he did for this team over a long period. There's a reason that the Roosters didn't have a drop off when Jason Taylor left. When in Jason Taylor's last two seasons, he was splitting time with Kari. Like he was he Jason Taylor was just playing playoffs pretty much. And that's because Kari was so good at such a young age. He started playing in Maple League when he was, what, 15 or 16, I think? And now he's uh, 20 now, and he's, he's it looks like a, a damn man out there. And you could tell the difference for the Roosters' offense early in the season. They were not as good, and there was things that they did well. There was things they did do well. But having, like, Adam Carnett at running back and not really having a strong running game, it hindered them from being able to be who they wanted to be. When Kari came in... All that went away. They, All that went away, and they became the roosters that we know and love. Yeah, I said it, know and love. They could do what they want, when they want, how they want. Things became easy. And like we said late earlier in the show, it got even easier when they had some offensive linemen come in and help later on. But the first thing that made it easy was putting young Kari on that field. And he immediately made an impact. And for the rest of the season, you knew that, hey, they're going to the uh, championship. Now it's just about who they're going to play there and how it's going to end up. How how many points are they going to score in that game? And that's what he did for that team. And that's why I think him at number one is a no-brainer. Pretty sure that's what I thought when we first started making the list was, well, Carr is number one. Let me fill out the rest of it. Man, I think, that, I think that this guy, it was early in the season when the big – Wolverines versus Roosters came up, and at the time, Wolverines are undefeated, and Roosters had one loss to Corpio, and I think that that was his one of his first games back. I think that when he stepped on that field in that game, and immediately people saw that that offense was just different. Like, everything started to click, and you know, at this time, this guy's going up in everybody's opinions, one of the most skilled, talented teams, one of the most loaded import teams. And Carr was running through and catching touchdowns and running touchdowns through guys like, OK, is this all you got? Are you not entertained? And that's when, for me personally, I said, all right, this kid, he's he's arrived. He's one of the greats. And even though, you know, he's been talked about most of his career, I think that now that he's he's matured, he's become uh, more well groomed, and he understands the game. He just really knows how to play. And I think what helped him a lot this year was he also got involved in the passing game out of the backfield, and now he's scoring receiving touchdowns or making big plays, just getting the ball in his hands. He's a very diverse player, but also Carr is very freaking strong. I mean, we talk about how 
how shifty he is, how explosive he can be in open field. But have you ever seen this guy drop his shoulder? Oh, I have, and I've caught a stiff arm too. He's just a, <laughs> he, he's just a complete back, and I'm talking about he's a guy that I feel like playing against him and some of our best import backs, it felt the same. Coming downhill trying to hit Kari almost felt the same as coming downhill trying to hit Christian Powell. I didn't like it. And that right there alone just says how talented this guy is. And um, I think that he definitely deserved to be where he is. And the crazy thing about it is he still hasn't reached his peak as a player, which is probably scary for the rest of you guys that weren't number one this year. <laughs> Damn, you said that. What about you, Q? What do you think about the number one player on our list? Um, I think, obviously, like you said, he's the number one pl- player uh, in Finland. I think if you if you I won't say if you put him on other teams, but I think if you do put him on other teams, he'll give you that same effort um, that he does his team. He runs hard. The game is never over for him. He's consistent. You can count on him. And uh, the tangibles as far as his size, his speed um, is just amazing. Uh, Just his ability to make cuts and his ability to to read the holes and the blocks. Um, He's just. He's what I say. He's a product of his, of his environment. I mean, he started with the Roosters when he was a little kid and came all the way up through the ranks. And you can see that the coaching helped him. And now that's why he stands out uh, more than anybody. I think uh, Kari is that one Finnish player that other teams in other countries probably want. Um, but he's so diligent to uh, the Roosters and he's so loyal to the Roosters that I don't think he would ever, you know, that's, unless it was like college or something, I think he would go. But as far as playing for anybody else, he's a rooster. His dad was a rooster. Um, and I think he's just, it's just in his blood. And, and and anytime you can have a kid from the time he was, he was, you know, seven, eight years old playing football, coming up in Finland for the same team. Um, it's just some pride to, to have this, to see him and his abilities now. So I think we haven't even seen Kari on a full season. Like we we haven't even seen him get the ball. Yeah, like we've we've never seen him consistently get the ball 15 times a game. If that happens, he's an MVP. He probably sets a rushing record. Um, so it's so it's so the 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 up the up part of him <laughs> is actually like we haven't even seen his top tier play yet. Uh, we've seen spurts of it, um, but he still has a lot to show. And I think uh, if if he does play this year, I think we will see that. But um, He's just he's just a guy who when you think about feminine football and consistency and uh looking on his list and and just knowing that if it was one person that will probably be back in that top five again, um, it'll definitely be him. So uh Kari, shout out to you, man, for, for just always being a good and he's a good guy. Like he's a good kid. You can tell he was raised right. Um I had no problems from him. And uh he he just comes to work. You know what I mean? He brings his lunch boxes and he comes to work and he does what he has to do. So um I think that's why he's number one three of the top five players we have on this list, we said they can be better. Like we said, they're, they're not even playing at the highest that they could play. So just imagine how difficult it is going to be to make this list in future years and how, how much harder it's going to be to get on the list because the top players aren't really even done and they can be better. So just just take that into you know account when you're thinking about this top 25 list late at night sometimes and you're just reminiscing. Uh, if you have any take on this top five part of our list, feel free to let us know on the AFF community forum at AmericanFootballInFinland.com. The uniform is more than a piece of clothing. It's an important piece of a team's image that mirrors the organization's values. With quality materials and the expertise of their in-house design team, Wrecker Athletics can make your organization's vision a reality. Contact Wrecker Athletics to take your team to the next level. Next week on AFF, we will be talking about Finland's CFL Combine results. I'm definitely excited to give my take on that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, just be ready, guys. We're going to keep it 100 when we talk about these combine results and let you know our thoughts on them. That's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Hope it was worth the listen. Do you guys have any last words before we go? i just like to say uh, thanks to you guys for, again, tuning in to the podcast. Again, congratulations to all the players on the top 25 list. Hope you guys are just motivated to get after it in 2020 and either prove people wrong or prove people right. Either way it goes, it's up to you. I hope you guys enjoyed the top 25. 
Um, like you said, I hope it's more motivation for other guys to want to be a part of it. Thanks to everybody that's supporting AFF and uh, looking forward to talking about more and more and more football. Now, all I'm going to say before we get out of here is the list is over. It's a list. It's over. I mean, it's going to stay here forever, but it's over. Let's move on. Let's talk football. Let's get foot Finland some exposure out here in the world. People are watching us. They're listening. We want to engage with everybody. Let's make sure that we keep this thing going. If you enjoy the show, please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to rate us five stars as well. We're new to the gram, but you can follow us at American Football in Finland. All right, so until next time, never forget T I F. We're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. American Football in Finland.